Uh, been a huge week for the Prime Minister. Started, of course, in question time in the House of Reps earlier in the week on Monday. And then he took off to uh, Indonesia and the Philippines. Important conferences. He's uh, going to end up in India, as I understand it, at the G20 meeting later this week. Joining me to get a handle on how important these gatherings are, Michael Shoebridge, Director of Strategic Analysis Australia. Good to talk to you again Michael, uh, let's start, though, with the, the big announcement that, that he will be the first PM in, in seven years to visit China. What, uh, how important will that visit be and how's he going to handle, uh, handle it? Because there's so many diverse issues that he's got to deal with. Yes, Steve. Well, look, I think it is really important to the government and the Labor Party, the ultimate goal that... Uh, Mr Albanese and Penny Wong have had with China is to have that handshake moment with Xi Jinping and to do it 50 years on from that other Labor Pantheon member, Gough Whitlam, establishing diplomatic relations with the Chinese Communist Party. So it's a very big moment for the Labor Party and for Mr Albanese in that Labor Party Pantheon. But I think for Australia and our interests they'll find it's a bit of the dog caught the car moment and what do we do now? So he has the issue, uh, obviously, that China is being aggressive in our region um, and that they've made no secret of the fact that they would like to reclaim Taiwan. How does he handle diplomatically that tricky question, Michael? Well, I think we'll see him behave a bit like we just saw all the ASEAN leaders behave um, at the ASEAN meeting where the most important outcome was the dance party after the gala dinner. So it's silence and speaking very softly about any of China's aggression while hoping desperately to get market access back. And I think that's the risk from Mr Albanese. Even if he gets those detained citizens, Cheng Lei and Yang Henjun, released which is still a low probability, what happens then beyond the vibe and handshakes? So he was in the Philippines today and we saw a little of the, the public version of, of the media conference with Filipino President Bongbong Marcos. Now, he brought up the Filipino president, China's claims in the South China Sea, that they're illegal. Uh, how's that going to play in Beijing? I mean, that's not going to go down all that well with the Chinese, is it? I think Beijing is, is happy to pretend it isn't happening because they feel a bit like they're getting everything they want out of Australia. We've seen this charm offensive turn back on with other countries too. But I would expect Mr Albanese is going to be very low-key about why the Philippines wants this strategic partnership with Australia. The Philippines wants it to help deal with the China challenge and to stop Chinese Coast Guard and militia vessels ramming Filipino vessels in the Philippines territory. That's what that's about. We've also got uh, some development on AUKUS in the US. We've got a couple of senators there issuing concerns about the cost to the US. Uh, is the AUKUS program again under political threat in the Biden administration, do you think? There's growing pressure in Congress and in the Pentagon about the challenges that American nuclear submarines and their industry and their navy have and I think the risk to AUKUS is Australia gets complacent and thinks we don't have to move fast to do things like build the east coast base have a west coast base and be able to maintain these nuclear submarines before those AUKUS ones turn up if we're complacent about AUKUS we'll look like a free rider in Washington. <laughs> 